Okay, we're going to continue with thermometers and uh, the Celsius and temperature scale. Now, all thermometers are based on some principle, uh, some physical property of a system um, that changes with the with the, the system's temperature. Uh, the volume of a liquid, such as is the case here, the uh, mercury th mercury uh, expands as it uh, as it's warmed. The dimensions of a solid, the pressure of a gas at constant uh, volume, the volume of a gas at constant pressure, the electric resistance of a conductor, or the color of an object. Uh, so here we have, you can see that the level, that the room temperature is 20 degrees C, um, and as we put it in this heated water, it rises to 30 degrees C. The uh, mercury has expanded, and so it fills the tiny capillary tube that is an indicator, is a temperature indicator. Um, now, we, there's another, uh, the, those, these types of thermometers, the, the mercury therm thermometers, or whether it's alcohol, sometimes they use uh, alcohol that's colored red. Um, these are very limited. They, they only work within a certain range. Uh, they can't go very low and they can't, they can't go very high. They can't go to the uh, freezing point of the liquid that's inside, and they can't go above the boiling point of the liquid that's inside. So there's limits to this. So we, you can use a, a constant volume gas thermometer. And so you have a, a volume of gas in a flask, and it's kept constant by raising or lowering the reservoir B to keep the mercury level in column A constant. Uh, so you can see there's, a, there's the gas inserted into a, uh, the bath, and you can see that there's a, uh, a flask A and a, a flask B connected by a, a flexible hose. Well, wait a minute, there's no pressure indicator. How do you get pressure? Well, you get pressure by the uh, P0 being the atmospheric pressure, and then you can get uh, rho GH. So if you just measure H, you take rho, which is the density of the material you have, G times, which is the gravitational constant, 9.8 meters per second squared, uh, and uh, H is the height. So as long as you can measure the height and you know the uh, initial atmospheric pressure, P0, then you can calculate P. Uh, so if you do this for different uh, temperatures that you can, rep you can represent, you'll, you'll form a line. The, the two dots represent known reference temperatures, the ice and steam points of water. Now, if it doesn't really matter what uh, different type of uh, gases you use, they all have the property uh, that if you were to draw the, draw the line and they, they would all intersect, um, they would all extrapolate to a, to a temperature of minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. And this minus 273.15 uh, 1.5 is the absolute temperature. That's uh, uh, the absolute zero. I should um, keep up with my text here. Okay, and, uh, so in every case, the pressure is zero when the temperature is 273.15 degrees C. Um, this is absolute zero. Now, you really can't achieve absolute zero. Um, it... Uh, you can you can get down to micro. We call this uh, uh, the zero degrees at this scale is the Kelvin temperature. You can get to micro Kelvin, but you can't get to you can't get to absolute zero Kelvin. Um, so we we look at this. Uh, we can compare it the uh, Celsius degree uh, the temperature in Celsius. Is equal to the abs the the temperature in the Kelvin scale minus two seventy three point one five. Um, so uh, note that the scale here is logarithmic. Uh, so there's equal spacing of uh, ten to the x. You know, ten to the ninth, eighth, seventh, sixth, all down to ten to the zero, which is one. So we can ten to the eighth is a hydrogen bomb. 10 to the seventh is the interior of the sun. You can go on. 10 to the three is copper melts. Uh, 10 to the uh, 
um, a little above uh, 100 degrees, actually uh, 273.15 water freezes. Uh, you, you have liquid nitrogen, liquid hydrogen, liquid helium. And the lowest temperature achieved experimentally is 10 to the minus 9 Kelvin. That's, uh, that would be in the nano Kelvin range. Uh, okay, now uh, to convert with between Kelvin and Celsius, you take the Kelvin temperature and you subtract 273.15. To convert from the um, Fahrenheit to the, um, to, to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit, um, you would, you use this formula, which is nine fifths of the Celsius temperature plus 32 uh, degrees F. And let me, uh, um, take the time to uh, do some some quick problems here, some homework examples, and I'll post I'll post these homework examples. Uh, I'm going to stop the share and then see if I can share the uh, iPad. And let's see if this works. Okay. Um, a nurse measures the temperature of a patient to be um, 41.5 degrees C. What is the temperature on the Fahrenheit scale? Uh, that's part A. Part B, do you think the patient is seriously ill? And explain why. Well, to convert to Fahrenheit, we will use equation 18.2. Um, the TF equals uh, 9 fifths. TC plus 32 degrees. So 9 fifths times 41.5 plus 32. Well, you end up with 106.7. Well, we're only going to use three significant figures. So that's 107 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's about eight degrees above normal. So yes, the person is ill. Okay, let's go. Um, let's do another one. Liquid nitrogen. I showed you a, uh, in the class, I showed you a a video of liquid nitrogen doer uh, releasing some pressure. So liquid nitrogen has a boiling point of minus 195.81 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. Express the temperature uh, A in degrees Fahrenheit and B in Kelvin. I hope it's showing all the, uh, let's see, oh, it's not. Okay, there, let's move it up, let's move it up. Okay, uh, once again, we'll use equation 18.2. And so um, the Fahrenheit temperature is 9 fifths times minus 195.81 C plus 32. And if you work, work that out, you get minus 320.46. And we're going to use three significant digits. That's 320 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, to convert to Kelvin, we use equation 18.1. So the, um, if you solve for 18.1 for uh, the Kelvin temperature, T, you get T is equal to TC uh, plus 273.15. And so minus 195.81 plus 273.15 is equal to 77.34 Kelvin. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna just round with three significant digits that 77.3 K. And uh, we'll, um, so that's an example. Let's, let's stop that share and go back to our, um, uh, so there's, there's some examples of how to use those conversions. Um, now, if you're just looking at a relative temperature change, you don't have to add the 32 degrees. You can just use the, the 5 ninths uh, for Fahrenheit to go to Celsius and just, um, a, a relative change, notice that there is no multiplier between Kelvin and Celsius, so, so there is no multiplier. So that's when you're doing just a delta T, when you're just looking at a relative change, not an absolute temperature reading. Uh, so consider the following pairs of materials, which two represent, uh, which, uh, I can't see that with my little video, which pair represents two materials, one of which is twice as hot as the other. Now. Uh, if you if you convert these to Kelvin, you'll see that it's uh, 
the ice cube at 20 degrees C uh, and the flames from a circus fire eater at 233 degrees C. Work it out, calculate it yourself, and you'll see. Uh, and in the next video, we'll talk about thermal expansion of solids and liquids. Um,